In this video I'm going to make a program that can convert CSV files to JSON files. But then the program will grow. The program also needs to convert JSON to CSV. With every change I make the program grows and a well-known problem becomes visible. Coupling. The program becomes harder to maintain and I will use inversion of control to decouple the code. The first version of my program will be a main script that imports a converter module that will convert a CSV file to a JSON file. Look at this code. Function convert CSV to JSON takes an input file name and output file name. Currently it just prints that it will convert the file. Let me show you. That works. Now let me show you the CSV file. There are columns X, Y and Z and it has two rows of data. I write the code to convert it to JSON. I read the data from the CSV. And save it to JSON. I execute the code and a JSON file should appear. Yep, that worked. Notice that the JSON is a list of dictionaries which I will enforce later when I add type hints. Ok, this program is now capable of converting CSV files to JSON. But it has some problems. Look at main. It has all the logic to convert the file. But I want to move all this logic to a separate class to keep main clean. I create module converter with class converter. I move the code from main and hook it up in main. I check if everything still works. It does. And that brings us to this diagram. Main now imports converter and uses it. But the converter method is not very flexible. What if I want to convert a JSON file to CSV file? I make the method name more generic. If the input file name extension ends with CSV, I load CSV data. Otherwise, JSON data. I do the same thing for saving the data. Never mind the warnings in the code editor. I will refactor the code many times and eventually they will disappear. I delete the CSV file and convert the other way around. And there is the CSV file again. So it works, but you already see where this code is heading to. The switch in this code will get complicated fast when new file formats need to be supported. This is not a good situation. So, what is my goal? The converter should have just one responsibility, which is to load and save data. And the converter should not have any knowledge of the source and the target format. For this I'm going to use two techniques. Dependency injection and dependency inversion. Step 1 is to extract all CSV and JSON logic. I create new module plugins. It will have all the logic to work with CSV and JSON. I start with the CSV class. 
It will take and store a file name. This time I'll annotate the code with type hints. The read method returns a list of dictionaries. And the write method takes a list of dictionaries. I do the same for the JSON class. I create a read method with the same signature as in the CSV class. And a write method with the same signature. I can now remove all CSV and JSON logic from the converter. Instead of importing JSON and CSV from the standard library, I import the CSV and JSON classes. And use them like this. That was a major refactor. I'll check if it works. Main still converts a JSON to CSV file. I removed the CSV file. And there is the CSV file again. Now I delete the JSON file and convert the other way around. That works. Files can be converted in both ways. All the file format logic is moved to the plugins module. This part of the code controls the conversion without knowing any CSV or JSON details. But there is still one problem in the code. Look at this arrow. It points down to the plugins module. You can see this dependency in the code. Here it is. The converter module imports CSV and JSON. This is known as a source code dependency. And why is this dependency needed? Because the converter class creates CSV and JSON class instances. And it even gets worse. The code needs a switch to create the proper instance. This violates the open closed principle. The consequence of this is that any new file format will force this class to change as well. It is my goal to lock this class. Any new file format should not affect this code. Is that possible? Oh yes, with the magic of dependency injection and dependency inversion. Let me show you. The first thing I will do is decouple the converter module from concrete types. Now this code cannot work anymore, so instead of instantiating the classes, I will pass instances of them. The passing of instances of CSV and JSON is called dependency injection. But what types can I use for input and output? I just removed the CSV and JSON imports. And this is where dependency inversion comes in. I'll first create the code and then explain it. I need to create a separate module that serves as an interface. I will create a protocol class to serve as the read interface. Notice the interface has the same signature as the concrete read methods in the CSV and JSON classes. I also create an interface for the write method. I can now use these interfaces as types in the converter class. And for the output. I import the interface. Very nice. This will clean up the code.
This is what the convert method should look like. No switch, no concrete types and the code is very easy to follow. Read data, write data. But I'm not done yet because I need to hook up everything in main. I import the concrete CSV and JSON classes. And convert like this. The CSV will be converted to JSON. I remove the JSON file and test again. That is nice. Let me test the other way around. That works as well. Before the last refactor, the converter method had a dependency on concrete classes CSV and JSON. This led to a number of problems in the code. So what happened? Well, this arrow got reversed. But how? By inserting a new interface layer. And that is dependency inversion. Notice that the converter does not import classes from plugins anymore. Instead, it imports from interfaces. But what about the plugins? It does not import from interfaces. So how does that work? Let me show you an interesting thing in the code editor. I disable this code in the CSV class. Watch what happens in main. The link between plugins and interfaces is not made by inheritance, but is structural. And this is known as structural subtyping. The static type checker considers the CSV class of type reader, because it has a read method with the exact same signature. At this point there must be one thing on your mind. We started with 12 lines of code. And suddenly we have 4 code files and at least 40 lines of code. What have we gained? Well, let me show you by adding a new file type converter. I want to be able to import XML files and convert to both JSON and CSV files. But remember, the goal of the exercise was to lock the converter class. And after all the refactor work, this is now possible. I create an XML file and create some data. I create an XML class in plugins. I only create a read method. That is enough to demonstrate the benefits of our approach. I hook it up in main. I delete the CSV and JSON file and test the code. And that works. It is of course dependency injection and dependency inversion that allows us to create modular systems. In this tutorial you saw me using protocol classes to create the interfaces, but you can also choose to use inheritance and to see the difference between the two, click on this video. There you will see the difference between nominal and structural subtyping.